up, though. Hustle. We've been surviving, fighting, and then we thriving. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have to keep on watching us. Mm-hmm. Grace to the ancestors. Moving in there, we grooving. Yup, yup, yeah. Getting under the cruising. Oh, yup, yup, yeah. Fighting it ain't our choosing. Like it's not fair. No, it's not fair. We, we gon' gonna climb higher with our fam. Amigos. Amigos. Inspire who I am. We take that eight mile, go the long road. That's, That's why. why you could taste how water saw rolls with lost. We are hollow today, tomorrow. You can follow the way to culture. We've been here. We're sisters and we're singers who grew up in a city that has inspired music for decades. Welcome to the D. What's up, y'all? It's your Girls Ain't Afraid. And we are here in our beloved city, Detroit, which was a city in the Green Book. The Green Book was a guide for black families to know where we could eat at, sleep at, and have fun in a time where we were not welcomed everywhere. And one of those places is sitting right behind us, the Eight Mile Wall. And I already know what you're thinking. This ain't a movie, dog. Now, this wall was created to keep people like us out. We couldn't buy homes on that side. This is also known as redlining. So we're taking the green book and putting our twist on it, Detroit style. We're here to celebrate our fashion spots, our food spots, our art spots, culture and community, and we want you to come with. So let's do it. So we're going around asking people about the green book. Do you, do you know, know what it is? No. Whew. I don't. I'm gonna be well, honest the green with you, book I don't. is. That's okay. Is it, is it a law book? Hmm. I know it as a movie. Okay. Um, the Green Book is a book that references where black people can and cannot go, especially in the South, um, as they're traveling. Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> ah, <laughs> there we go, okay. baby. It was like the Yellow Pages before Yellow Pages. You know what I'm saying? This. Um, book came out during the Jim Crow era. Yeah, definitely take a look at that. Yes. Yes, because a lot of people don't know about Jim Crow. Yes, know. they don't. It's a part of history they don't talk about, but that's we're, we're keeping it alive. The people are going to know about it. And, and we're reimagining so it. Yes. Yes. First, we got to give our props to the past. Detroit, 1955. When black families wanted to have fun, they do it here at, at Rollercade. Johnny May Folks was the first black woman to own a roller skating rink in all of Detroit. This was the only place that we could go, and it's still here rocking today. You can't kill culture. This is for the free spirit. That time at the barbecue, that's we chillin'. Don't say I didn't tell you, yeah, it's on. We want one breeze in the sun. Wow. This is tight. I hear that. Hey! What up, though? What up? And nine. Okay. And me. But I have to ask you real yes, quick. Do y'all have blades? Well, we have quads. Quads You're only. A blader. I'm a blader. <laughs> That's okay. We'll do we'll do quads today. Okay. All right, ladies. Okay. Y'all have a great time. Thank, Thank you. you. What's up, Ain't Afraid? I see you out there. What's up? Oh my god, we just got a shot out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah! Yo, I'm scared, y'all. Like, we ain't afraid, but I'm a little scared. I ain't scared. You ready? <laughs> Let's go. No, Listen, y'all. Baby, baby on board. <laughs> baby on board. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> hey, Uncle Earl, come get them. Here we go. Lady. Yes, Mr. Earl. Help you out. Yeah. I'm going to show you a nice, easy little step that we can do. OK. okay. Check this out. We're just going to stand in one spot. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick our feet up and down to the beat of the music like this. We're going to go right. Yeah. Yeah. And this little thing we're doing right here, now this little beat we got going, yeah. check out what we're going to do to it. A little to the right, a little to the left. A little to the right, a little to the left. A little to the right, a little to the left. Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. Bro. Oh, I get it. Come on. I get it. Bro. I get it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't get it. Wait, wait, wait. So, Roller K. Roller K. A. 
heirloom? A heirloom, yeah, a for heirloom. sure. I like that. I'm the third generation owner, and then if you look, it's a very unique skating ring. Like yes. the, the size of it, the shape of it. What is it about the shape of this? It's rectangular, yeah. square? It's like a, a rectangle slash square. Yeah. It's this size because this is the most land that they would sell a black person yeah. at that time. So this is the wow. most commercial property that my grandparents could get. Is this an acre at all? I don't think so, no. Wow. No acres. Girls, it's not even the mule. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's even the mule. mule. Yeah, no acres, no mule, yeah. just blood, sweat, tears. During the Green Book era, why was Rollercade the place to be? Rollercade was the place to be because it was one of the first roller rinks in Detroit mm. that let black people skate, let us skate seven days a week, and it wasn't a dress code to enter. Think about like what our people was going through in the 1950s, dealing with segregation, places they could go, places they can't go. Mm. This is one of those places they could come and just release that. It was therapeutic, mm. and I think that the Rollercade is still a place of release for people today. Rollercade. <laughs> Yeah. More about this Detroit skate culture. Right. Like, yeah, put yeah, the yeah. people on. Right, because this yeah. place isn't just the history, like, with the style. But Detroit, you know, we got a very unique style of skating. Mm -hmm. I, I consider it, like, ballroom dancing mixed with, like, figure skating. Oh. And then, you know, it's still from that Motown music. So, like, if you go back and watch David Ruffin, when uh -huh. he would perform, mm -hmm. he'd jump off stage and hit the drop. That's, that's like, one of the same moves people do on skates. So, wow. that Motown music and that Detroit style, that's all rooted mm. at, the, at the same spot. You know, we always had flavor. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of it. Everything that you love about black music today started right here, Detroit. Motown was known for producing some of the greats like Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, and Diana Ross, just to name a few. Everybody in America knew what Motown was all about. They don't call it Hitsville for no reason. That's all we produce, baby. Hits on hits on hits. When it comes to blackness, we come from all types of places. There is not just one story to describe who we are. Since the boom of the automotive and oil industries in Detroit, it's no secret that African-American culture is rooted here. But so is African culture. For decades, Africans from countries all over the continent have come to Detroit to raise families and own businesses. Y'all know we had to take y'all to the local spot. Welcome to Maddie's. Hello. Salam. Yeah. Malaikum salam. How are you? Very well, Not very good well. Good, good. We come in here, we say salam, uh -huh. uncle. We go to the next shop and we like, what's up, auntie? You what know up, what I'm And that's why it's so important to know stories. You know, that's why I love local spots like Maddie's because this food goes back all the way for centuries and we have that today and present time for us to be able to tap in with our ancestors in the Detroit city. Yes. Hey. hey. This is the red snapper fish. Ooh. With fry plantain. Mmm. Really good, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, there's a large population of African communities in Detroit. We got, we got South African, East African, West African, Africans, Senegalese community, Nigerian community, Tanzanians. The list goes on and on and on, and so does the food. Yes. I already know I'm getting peanut butter stew. You know. I remember the first time, mm -hmm. the very first time I had peanut butter stew. Yeah. And that was the day I found out peanut butter was that girl. It was that girl. It was she was that girl. that girl. Okay? I am the boss. I go so hard. I am the chef. I got the sauce. I always win. Never a loss. I am the captain. I make it happen. Hello. I'm bringing Tess of Senegal. Oh. It's called Mafe, the peanut butter stew. The yeah. peanut butter stew. Yeah, it's called Mafe. You guys are feeding the city of Detroit this wonderful yes. African food. Yes. I, I have to ask you, mm -hmm. why Detroit? Why Detroit? Detroit? Mm -hmm. Because uh, I moved to Detroit in 2003. So 20 years ago. Yes, but when I come to Detroit mm -hmm. in 2005, I got married with my beautiful young wife. Oh. So this oh. is the family family business. Mm. It's like yeah. a, a legacy yeah. that keeps legacy, carrying exactly. on. Legacy, exactly. This is the test of Senegal. Thank you. It Thank smells you so amazing. Much. Thank it you so much. Amazing. Thank you for coming Thanks. in. Bon appetit. So you know Detroit is known for fashion. <laughs> Obviously. So it was only right that we hit up the avenue of fashion on Livinois. Detroit fashion has its own swag. 
it's ingrained in the culture of the city mm -hmm. and it had a lot to do with at the time Detroit was a test market mm -hmm. where uh, this market was one of the first markets in the country where you got paid weekly wow. so all the marketers and all the producers they knew to come to Detroit to try their different products and services mm -hmm. and then you have these beautiful cars rolling off the assembly line and you can't take it and jump in a Cadillac or a deuce in a quarter that was called back in the day mm -hmm. with some joggers deuce on. Deuce in a quarter. So you got to come with that. that. Okay. You got to come with that madness. Yeah. So. What inspired you? Like, did you have it, that hunger for fashion at a young age? Watching my older brothers, watching my dad. Again, you know, Sunday's best. And there's mm -hmm. a reason why they say Sunday best because you come to church half step and you'll get slayed. Yes. And so when you put on a Sunday best, that culminated throughout the course of our culture because we were and still is a city that really uh, expressed ourselves when we go to church and we do it with our fashion. It's something different than everybody else. Yes. We love Flash, we love Dash. Yeah. We can put it all together. She's coming home with me. So if there's not two yeah. together, then we have a problem. So we dress how we feel. Yeah. And so we love colors. It's about the, the colorful silhouettes. It's about how we interpret ourselves. We are predominantly black a city. As a result, you're going to see a wide range of fashion. Right. So this has been wonderful. Thank you again so, so much. We're here at 313, Detroit's brand name. Black owned everything. What up, though? What up, though? Hey. Welcome to 313. How long have y'all been here? Oh, we've been in business since 2015. Well, I haven't been here personally myself, but I've heard a lot about 313. And I've seen your jackets around these parts. Why do you think that is? Because we Detroit's brand name. OK, OK. I mean, it's, we are Detroit. So yeah. when you come in here, you stepping into Detroit. Mm -hmm. When you're walking out of here, you're still stepping into mm -hmm. Detroit. Absolutely. That was yeah, B. Yeah. So B, check it out. We're on a mission to recreate the Green Book. Okay. Do you know what that is? I'm a little familiar with it. Black entrepreneurship, yeah. black travel, mm -hmm. black money. How has that influenced you in this shop? I'm a hard-nosed, hard-working city. That's what we all about. 313, we doing Detroit our way. Well, we're here. It looks fly. I'm ready to have some fun. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Come up with the outfit. Ready? OK. Wait, wait. Time. Starts. Go ahead. Now. OK. OK. Now, I want to start with this shirt, because of course, I'm a D girl. This is OK. Oh, we got to start with a black pant. OK. OK. Shirt. Oh. 20 more seconds. Oh, sis, I don't care. My outfit is fire. Nope. She cannot beat this outfit. It is color coordinated. We don't even got to debate. We don't even got to debate. It isn't throwing up color. It is balanced. It is perfect. It is 313 original. We finished it off with a hat. Detroit raised me. My outfit matched both yours and my outfit. Okay. I already win. Give me the explanation of what's going on here. D girl, Detroit yeah. raised me. Yeah. It's just, it's like, it's calling for one another. You think yours is great. I know mine is. Girl, <laughs> oh so let's ask B to choose. Okay. Who is this? Okay, B. And now be smart now. All yep. these pieces individually are great. Yeah. But who put them together the best? Who wins? See, that's the great thing about 313. Here, everybody wins. It's a tie. No, it ain't. What is a sundown town? Ooh, sundown town, sundown town. A place where everything closes after sundown? Sundown Town is a place in which you cannot go if you are of a certain orientation that is referred to as black, colored, you know, dark skin, whatever you want to refer to it. A sundown Town is a place where you had to be in somewhere by sundown because it wasn't safe for the color of our skin. Okay. Yes, there you go. Still like that down south yep, in a in lot some of places. places. Yes. And we have former cities like that in Michigan in today. Michigan and, Get oh, caught you after know. dark yeah. up there, you they'll know. let you know. And yeah, you know I know. Okay. And I know mm -hmm. this. OK? Did you know that the city of Royal Oak used to be a former sundown town? Sundown town. Yes, indeed, which means after sunset, fine people like ourselves, black folk, wasn't allowed in, in town after sunset. But today, black people are opening up their very own businesses in this city. Chef Omar is revolutionizing fine dining in this former sundown town. And if that's not history, I don't know what it is. Hey, hey Chef Omar! Hey, what's happening? How are you, ladies? We're really good. It's a pleasure to meet you. This Thank place you. is incredible. Look Thank you. 
We are on a mission to reimagine the Green Book, and you are our last stop. So can you tell us if anything that you know about this town? Yes, it's an amazing place to be here in Royal Oak, Michigan. We are definitely excited to have you guys. And as an African-American owner of this place, uh, mm -hmm. we certainly want to make some noise. Yes, yes. Definitely, definitely. Speaking of you being an African-American owner of this place. Yes. I hear you're the only African-American owner of a 3D fine dining experience in Michigan. Not only in Michigan, in the world. In the world? In the world. In the world! Yes. Whoa! You ready for 3D dining? Let's go! I wanted to make sure that we reached Michelin standards. So I did my research and I located this company in Germany to actually come in and do the IT to get everything installed for us. Whoa. And what is your mission? Well, the mission at the end of the day is hopefully to become a Michelin-rated restaurant. As of right now, to date, there is no Michelin restaurants in the state of Michigan. Yeah. You only get up to three stars for Michelin. Right. One at a time. Ladies, ready to get dirty? I'm Let's ready get, to get dirty. dirty. I need an apron, gloves, stack. Let's go. For today, chef. We have tomahawk steak, which is a ribeye steak, okay. ragu. We're actually serving it bone on mm -hmm. uh, because that helps with the marbleization and the flavor profile. Oh, you can lift with these. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's get this steak marinated and seasoned mm -hmm. up. Okay. So we're just marinating this in some olive oil. Okay. A little garlic and fresh herbs. Okay, fresh herbs and the fixings. And our house seasoning. Just grab a little and sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. Get in there. There you go. I'm not afraid. Yeah, no. Hey, listen, never that. Yeah. See that? Beautiful. So we're going to let that get nice and caramelized. Yeah. We're going to give it about three to five minutes on each side. Three to five minutes. Yep. We're going to, I like to serve my steaks rare to medium. Mm. Uh, that's when you get the true essence of the flavor profile. Inside. If you look closely there, yeah. you see those, those white lines and the fat, that's the marble. So now I want to take it this way, and we're going to create a diamond on it now. Oh, so that's how they be doing those. Y'all be seeing that in the stores. Yeah. Presentation is everything. 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 Woo! Like, what is the biggest thing that you're proud to say you've accomplished thus far? The biggest thing that I'm proud to say I've accomplished is certainly having uh, numerous of fine dining restaurants where I can hire the brown and black community to come and work here mm -hmm. uh, and have a job that's a place that they can call their own. Yes. The folks that we hire here are the single parents, the high school dropouts, mm -hmm. the folks that just were always told no. Because you are feeding me the energy I need. Yes. Our culture alone is a trendsetter in fine yes. dining restaurants. So I thought yes. it was important to me that I also take my career and my skill set to the highest of possibility. I love it. We're going to make it anywhere, yeah. everywhere. That's I right. love it. Ladies, ready to start plating? I want to show you guys how we actually plate the food. Let's dive in. So we'll start with some of these crispy uh, fingerling potatoes. I want you to put those dead center of this plate. Just pile them up, kind of like a mountain. Pile them up. Build dead it up. Center. Build Come it on, up. Sis. Let's, Let's get it in. Go. It's all art, so you can't really mess up art. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. okay. Build it up high because we need elevation. We need. We do. Because all we do is elevate. take it to the next level. Yes. So now we just take this tomahawk and we just rest it on top of those potatoes like that. Ooh. Cute. Take some mushrooms and start from here and drizzle down and let a nap pay like a little Ooh, river. Okay. There you go. Right? Just, yep, that's Ooh. it. And just, oh. now just let it just cascade okay. down. Ooh. Sakina, you are natural. I'm a Beautiful. Artist. Some thyme. Mm. And you just want to take this and rest it in between that fat right there. Ooh, like a, like a little feather. Yep. Now okay. we're going to get some of those beautiful flowers over there that we have. Mm. Cascade them down the steak. Beautiful. Keep it's like a right science to this. Absolutely. And that's Just it. Enough. Simplicity sometimes wins the race. With fingerling potatoes, bon appetit. How many does this feed? That We serve that for two people in our restaurant, mm. but we always get folks in here all the time and order it just for one person. Yeah, I'm folks. <laughs> yes. I'm folks. Folks is me. <laughs> so that's it, Detroit. We did it. We've created our own green book. Roller K was a place to be because it was therapeutic. Everything that you love about black music today started right here. They don't call it Hitsville for no reason. We were and still is a city that really uh, express ourselves when we go to church and we do it with our fashion. The biggest thing that I'm proud to say I've accomplished is certainly having the numerous of fine dining restaurants where I can hire the brown and black community. And there's still more cities to come. Hey, yo, who got next?